you guys know good old Ben Shapiro, Benny Shap as we know him. He was giving one of his talks. Now, I did a response video to one of his videos that I shit you not was titled something like Top 10 Ways to like Debate a Leftist or something like that. Now, there was basically another one of this, but I think this one was like 7 or 8 or something like that. So, I guess he's like a self-help guru of how to debate leftists, which is kind of embarrassing. You guys have seen the cringe uh, book cover where he says like how to debate leftists every t and destroy them every time. It's pretty fucking cringe. Let's keep it real. But what we're going to be looking at here is... Ben Shapiro is going to call the left totalitarian for wanting a minimum wage. They do. So, speak their language. In other words, next time they say something like, I believe in the minimum wage, then you should say, why exactly is it that you want to put a gun to the head of a business owner and force them to pay something? Why is that okay? Why isn't that violative of basic principles of consent? Like you, you know, you over here, you like gay marriage because you say that two men should be able to wed each other, but those two men shouldn't be able to do business with each other in a mutually agreed relationship. So if instead of them having sex, they were actually just one was signing a check to the other to paint his car. Then you're saying that's not okay? And that you're going to take a gun and put it to the head of one of them in order to make that happen? It's because you're a totalitarian. Right? This is the truth. The left is totalitarian. You don't have to feel bad about saying these things. And when, when somebody on the, when you talk, it's because you're a totalitarian. This is just pure insanity, and I, I don't really know whether or not to engage these kind of points, because now we're starting to get into just, like, this kind of Alex Jones territory, where you just say, like, this crazy shit that makes no sense. So, when you call the left, especially in the United States, the left is basically center-right on uh, European countries and virtually everywhere else in the industrialized world, um, because you're looking at, you know, them having more, you know, a lot, you know, more developed social safety nets and having... Every other industrial country has one form of single payer or another, uh, a universal healthcare system, I should say. But, you know, what we're looking at here is just some ridiculousness. Now, the comparison between gay marriage and, you know, a minimum wage doesn't make sense. But I wanted to say that even there, there's actually no contradiction by any means. Because when you're talking about two, two gay people getting married, the state is essentially saying, yeah, this is okay. So they're signing off on it as part of the contract. In a minimum wage, they're part of the contract, and they say that this is what the minimum wage needs to be. So, because you sign a contract with the government every time you do anything, because you don't, without the government, you don't have any property rights or anything like that. So, anything you sign as a contract, you're signing with the state. You're signing with the state. And so, when you do that marriage, you do that too. They're signing it off. They're saying, yeah, okay, you can get married. I don't understand that. What do you mean? Like, what do you tell? Where's the contradiction there? But this hyperbole of, oh, they're putting a gun to your head, does anyone really believe this? Like, are you serious right now? Not even libertarians, because libertarians use this the most. Not even libertarians say that, because it's just so stupid. They say, throw you in jail. He's not putting a gun to your head. Like, what? Well, like when you don't pay minimum wage, like, you get, they, you, they have to file, like, a lawsuit, and then you get fucking fined or whatever and shit like that. So, it's just, it's pure insanity, dude. Like, are we really supposed to take the guy who's calling the left in, in the United States, which is essentially neoliberal left, uh, neoliberals, totalitarian? I mean, I'm just... I just fail to understand it because this is just, it's pure hyperbole. It's, uh, it's incoherent. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And you, he knows too. He knows this because when he said it, he was laughing about it, like kind of awkwardly saying, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to hate saying this. But, uh, and the other thing is too, is like, there's always these, uh, the other things I understand, like what he's saying about the, uh, compulsion that, that the same thing applies to taxation. So I'm assuming that he thinks that taxation is theft as well, because, and if so, I mean, uh, we've pretty much lost the realm of realm of reason because if you don't believe that uh, the government should collect taxes, you're purely insane and probably not worth even engaging in any any sort of real way, um, because that that's tax taxation is required. It's required for a nation, and you can't have a voluntary system or else there can be barely any funding for the fucking government. And so, this guy and I I know I said this in the video that I did about his um, the ten ways to debate leftists or whatever garbage. But he sounds like in like uh, a 12 year old in a like 20 year old man's body uh, just screaming his rage of Ayn Rand talking points at the world. But honestly, I mean, did Ayn Rand call the left left totalitarian? I would imagine she did, but I don't know for sure. But this is just pure insanity, man. But again, <clears throat> he's cool with government compulsion in other ways, whether it be drugs. He actually made the argument in one of his articles back in the day that... Um, he was basically trying to argue against people because people are saying, hey, why are you putting people in jail for putting what they want in their bodies because they're talking about, you know, marijuana? Because he was at the time uh, pro or anti-marijuana legalization. I think he's like sort of moderate on it now. But 
he made the argument to, in response to that to saying, you know, oh, why don't we start killing homeless drifters because it doesn't it doesn't affect anyone. So clearly he has he has areas where he wants to the government to compel certain actions. Um, but I look it looks like, it looks like this isn't one of them. So a basic as a minimum wage to to protect the workers in the United States and to make sure that they're not in obscene poverty. And, and here's the thing also I have to ask, who wants to work for lower than minimum wage? Like who's who's going to come to you and be like, yo. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to work for you for less than minimum wage. Nobody. What the fuck are you talking about? So it's just pure insanity. I'm telling you, whenever you sign a contract, the business owner and the laborer, you sign a contract. You're signing it with the government in every fucking contract you sign, because they are what the you know the founding of the. They're the whole reason why there's any rights in this country whatsoever. Private property rights don't exist. None of that without the state. And therefore, whatever you do, the state is part of the contract. And it's just, it's just embarrassing, dude. Like, come on. Am I really supposed to say, this dude really just said that the left is totalitarian for wanting a minimum wage. I don't even know if, I don't even know if Steven Crowder would say this. I don't, I don't think he would. I don't know. Maybe he would. I'm not really sure, but come on, man. You gotta be better than this, dude. You gotta be better. This is just like, you, the, people think this guy is going to win in 2020. The dude who doesn't want a minimum wage thinks he's gonna win in 20 forget him i don't know what he thinks honestly I, all i know is all of his fans all the sycophantic fans believe that he's gonna win so let me know your guys thoughts on this it's just pure insanity